a warm welcome to our liturgy this week on the Feast of Corpus Christi. May Christ's blessing come upon all of us at this time. Hello, my name's Gordon and I'm from St Gregory's Parish. This is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how the Lord God led you for 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, to test you, and know your innermost heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. He humbled you. He made you feel hunger. He fed you with manna which neither you nor your fathers had known, to make you understand that man does not live on bread alone, but that man lives on everything that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Do not become proud of heart. Do not forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who guided you through this vast and dreadful wilderness, a land of fiery serpents, scorpions, thirst, who in this waterless place brought you to water from the hardest rock, who in this wilderness fed you with manna that your fathers had not known. This is the word of the Lord. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem, O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem, O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem, O oh, Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates, He has blessed the children within you. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem, O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He established peace on your borders, and he feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth, and swiftly runs his commands. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem, O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He makes his word known to Jacob, and to Israel his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations, he has not taught them his decrees. O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem, O oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Hello, my name is Peter and I am from St Catherine's Parish. This is a reading from St Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ and the bread that we break is a communion with the body of Christ. The fact that there is only one loaf means that though there are many of us we form a single body because we all have a share in this one loaf. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah. Hello, my name is Sandra and I'm from the St. John Vianney's Parish. This is a reading from the Gospel according to John. To the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread shall live forever, and the bread that I shall give is my flesh, for the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? they said. Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. Anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I shall raise him up on the last day. 
For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me, and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever eats me shall draw life from me. This is a bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate. They are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. The senior Ronald Knox once said that it's in regularly celebrating Eucharist that we have been truly, truly faithful to the commands of Jesus. How true is that? History shows us that we failed miserably in being able to carry out the key commandments and invitations of Jesus enshrined in the Beatitudes and his commandment of love. We have been too weak to implement them and have rationalised and compromised them in one way or another. We have somehow managed to exempt ourselves from the core gospel demands to love our enemies, to turn the other cheek when attacked, to forgive 70 times 7, to leave our gift at the altar and first go and seek reconciliation before we worship, to place justice on the same level as worship, to see mercy as more important than dogma, and not to commit adultery or steal or call someone a fool or tell lies or give in to jealousy. We have in virtually every one of these areas, individually and collectively, been unfaithful and guilty of compromise and rationalisation. But we have, for the most part, been faithful and consistent throughout all the years to the command of Jesus to celebrate the Eucharist, to meet together in every circumstance, sharing his word, breaking bread and drinking wine in his memory. Bread was not a random choice of element for Eucharist. It's so important and significant at many levels. Did you ever give a thought about how the loaf came to land up on the table? Many agents contribute to its making. The soil, the sun, the rain, the work and intelligence of people like the farmer, the miller, the baker, the driver, the shopkeeper. And then there's God's part in it. Without God, the work would not even begin. Many grains of wheat go into making one loaf, grains that were once scattered over the fields. The grains were then harvested, the ground then ground into flour and baked, thus producing a loaf. It takes a lot of work to produce bread. So Paul uses the loaf as a symbol of our unity in Christ. When we gather together to celebrate Eucharist at weekends, we form the body of Christ, the church. Together, we become the bread of life for others. This is an even greater miracle than the loaf of bread. But for the last couple of months, we have been scattered and unable to come together to celebrate Eucharist, the gift of Holy Communion given us by Jesus. In normal times of the past, during the week, we were scattered throughout the housing areas in South East Edinburgh and even further afield. But each weekend, we gather together. Here, we become the body of Christ made visible. Here, we laid down our differences and became one family. Here, we were in from the cold and we experienced the warmth of community. Love was the air we breathed here. Of course, it was not an automatic thing. We had to try to rise above the obstacles that prevent us experiencing and expressing our unity. Things like shyness, coldness, busyness and indifference. The Eucharist is both the sign and the source of our unity. But we can't be truly in communion with Jesus if we're not in communion with one another. 
sadly, when we left the church building at the weekend, we sometimes left behind our connectedness, going our own ways, getting on with our own lives, ignoring our interdependence on one another. And alas, sometimes even turning against one another. We need to be clear that our gathering together at the weekend is not a random experience unrelated to the rest of life. Our worship is a cycle. We gather to celebrate, reflect on our life and make an offering to God of the seven days that we've been living. We are then sent forth to share the fruits of our worship with the people we live and work with before returning with the fruits of our labour. Once again, to celebrate, reflect and offer them to God. I wonder if the weak point in this whole cycle is and has been how we fail to put the work in to making the word bear fruit. Eucharist consists of the word of God and the bread of life being shared. My own view is that the Reformation, when the Christian church divided and separated, we held fast to the bread of life and the reformers claimed the word. This was reflected in the liturgy where the reformers rarely celebrated communion, but focused almost entirely on the word of God. But we Catholics focused mainly on the bread of life at Mass, adoration and benediction. The word of the scriptures was not considered to be a pursuit for Catholics. Indeed, Catholics of a certain generation really only reclaimed the word in the 20th century, and this was validated by the Second Vatican Council. Missionary areas of the church which have been deprived of the bread of life because they lack the presence of a priest have nonetheless continued to be nourished and grow. That's because they've focused on what they are able to do in worship, despite not having a priest to celebrate Eucharist. We now find ourselves in the position that so many millions of Catholics have faced for many years. We are unable to celebrate the bread of life part of Eucharist because we are unable to gather together physically each weekend. In a recent interview with Austin Ivory, Pope Francis responded to a question about the emergence of a new kind of home church during this time of lockdown. He said, we have to respond to our confinement with all our creativity. We can either get depressed and alienated or we can get creative. Perhaps we've not made enough of our celebration of the word. Perhaps our focus has been too much on the bread of life to the detriment of the word. We now have the opportunity to focus more on the word. But it's not enough simply to hear the word of the scriptures. We need to internalise it and allow it ourselves to be challenged by it. I remember as a student many years ago, reading Father Jock Dalrymple, and that the scriptures, especially the gospels, are not something that we should use to defend our position or to help us score points by quoting it. He said that the gospel comes with an RSVP. It's an invitation asking for a response. If we are to make any sense out of all this lockdown, and the fact that our lives are turned upside down and we are denied access to the bread of life. Perhaps God is inviting us to focus more on his word. Father Mike and I have spoken about this and we would earnestly ask you to consider taking the opportunity of responding to the invitations in the cluster newsletter to join a group to reflect on the gospel each week. We genuinely believe that this would be an investment in strengthening the faith of each of us and of our cluster parishes. Come, Holy Spirit, for the hearts of your faithful people, 
and kindle in us the fire of your love. Grant us the courage to reflect on your word and the wisdom to allow it to season our faith, that we may renew the face of the earth by loving unconditionally, as Jesus taught us. Come, Holy Spirit. Prayers of intercession, Corpus Christi. Let us pray. For all living in the midst of social unrest, due to structures that victimise people because of the colour of their skin or their ethnicity, that their righteous anger is channeled from violence into right action. May all those in positions of power recognise the systemic divisions in our societies and listen to those who are marginalised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the wealthy nations on earth, that have been encouraged to show restraint in lockdown and thus able to see the benefits to creation, that they will realise this is an opportunity to continue to use the earth's precious resources wisely and share them fairly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For situations where we see God at work beyond the boundaries of the church, in the vast numbers of those giving extraordinary service, May we be true to our calling as the body of Christ, as we stand alongside them in prayer, recognise the sacred in everyone, and ask for discernment for what we feel called to do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For families who are struggling both economically and emotionally, that they will be at the forefront of any future planning. For vulnerable children and young people, who may be at a transition period in their lives, that they will receive support and clear guidance in any decision making. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are unwell at home or in hospital, especially those living at ho- alone, may they experience God's healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently and for all whose anniversaries occur at this time, may they rest in eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hello, my name's Jerry, and I'm from St John Vianney's Parish. I'd like to invite you to join in our prayer to be missionary disciples. Lord, continue to bless our community in this time of transition. Help us on our journey to grow from a maintenance church to a missionary church. Give us the courage to be missionary disciples. Make our doors wide enough to receive all who need human love and fellowship. Narrow enough to shut out all envy, pride and prejudice. Kindle in us the fire of your love that all who come here will find joy, peace and love. Make this a house of prayer and a gateway to your kingdom. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you give us your body and blood in the Eucharist as a sign that even now we share your life. May we come to possess it completely in the kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God come upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.